I also want to thank my rabbi, and because he gave me the gift of allowing to share my thoughts uh, in the Yisker sermon. So thank you, Rabbi Barris. <clears throat> so I'm sure most of you know that just over a year ago, my, my beautiful mother died. Uh, she died in August last year. She used to sit in the second row, right over there, on the aisle, of course on my side, singing every note with me, breathing when I breathed, and smiling when I smiled. In the past few years, I had watched as her energy diminished, but never her spirit. Her spirit remained completely alive until her death. And though I told myself that she would live to see the birth of her great-grandchildren, on some level, I knew that this would never happen. I also had a reminder, a very difficult reminder each year during the high holidays when I would sing the Unatana Tokef. This piyut, or poem, that many consider to be the pinnacle of the Rosh Hashanah liturgy contains the words, who shall live and who shall die? Who shall reach the end of their days and who shall not? You can't find the words of the Unatana Tokef in the Bible or in the Talmud because they don't exist in these sources. During a very devastating time in Jewish history, the poem was written by an unknown author whose imagination and imagery made these words remarkably powerful. They have rattled our very beings, making us contemplate our unknown futures with great uncertainty. We are forced to look at our now and at our tomorrow, and yet we feel very little control over either of them. I think the best word to describe this feeling would be vulnerable. Why then, when we are asked to search deep within ourselves and to examine the mistakes we have made in the past year, analyzing and pondering why we do the things we do, are we also asked to deal with death? Isn't it hard enough to self-examine and self-analyze without also having to self-actualize our own death? The opening words of the Unatana Tokef say, on Rosh Hashanah, this is written, on the fast of Yom Kippur, this is sealed. If you remove these first few lines and the last lines of the Unatana Tokef, through prayer and righteous giving, we can transcend the harshness of the decree what is left is a series of questions without answers. Questions all beginning with the word, who? No one knows the answer to these questions because in reality, anything can happen at any time. Who will reach the ripeness of age? And who will be taken before their time? Who by fire? And who by water? Who by war? And who by beast? We are all part of a story that belongs solely to us. And none of us know the plot while we are living, no matter how hard we try to create it. What we do know is that life is difficult. Life is challenging. And life can be very, very painful. And the Unatana Tokef is placed in our liturgy to remind us that even with all of these obstacles, and I'm going to repeat these last lines again. Through prayer and righteous giving, we can transcend the harshness of the decree. Here are the three ways that Judaism guides us through the trials of life. First, teshuva, which translates as return or repentance, or put in a simpler way, it means the ability to move, to change course, to come back to your center, and repair those things within you that feel broken. Second, tefillah, which translates as prayer. It's the ability to let the world take your breath away, to hold on to and articulate gratitude, hope, and awe, and to change the dialogue going on in your mind to one of deep appreciation for all the beauty around you. And finally, Tzedakah, or righteousness, is the ability to pursue justice and to act from a fountain of generosity 
and to receive so much joy in giving in every way possible in order to make our world and those that live in it feel a little bit of the fortune that you have attained. We don't have control over so much of our lives, but we do have control over so many of the decisions as to how we choose to live our lives. Perhaps we can't transcend the harshness of the decree, but we can deflect the abrasiveness of the decree by changing the focus from our powerless suffering to our power of response. I had foolishly thought that I would be prepared for my mother's death. I mean, after all, I certainly have all the tools and the insight. Unfortunately, I was not ready at all for her to leave this earth. And I suffered quietly for many, many months after she died. I didn't like the plot, I didn't like the decree, and I wasn't happy that I couldn't control it or change it. I even went as far as to blame myself for the choices I had made in order to help her. I knew I had to find a way to heal myself, and so I turned to teshuva, tefillah, and tzedakah. With my teshuva, I was able to turn inward and realize that I had done everything possible to help my mother in her last days of life. With my tefillah, I used the unabashed beauty of prayer to realize the unabashed beauty of my mother. With tzedakah, I relished the teachings of my mother who always put her hands in her pockets for those less fortunate, and I continued to do the same. Instead of weeping over my mother's death and arguing with God because she would not be written in the book of life anymore, I celebrated her life. Today, as we ask God to inscribe all of us in the book of life, we need to remember that there is only one life story and the story is ours. If we are resentful that we don't have complete control over our lives, we might as well just do as we want, live for the moment, and enjoy greed and selfishness. We will not have left anything extraordinary for this world to emulate. The children and family that follow after us will never know that they could have made a difference because they will, will be too busy trying to control their destiny. It is teshuva, tefillah, and sadaka that give us direction and a way to live a richer and kinder life filled with giving and loving and sharing and growing and wisdom. With these practices, we can clearly deflect from the painful decrees. How blessed are we, all of us, sitting here together during these days of awe, worshiping with one voice and one soul. Each of us brings their own story to these holy days, but together we become one magnificent community. May each of us build on our own uniqueness and strength of character so that no matter what the decree, our lives together and apart are rich and meaningful. May this be God's will.